Beef stew has to be one of the all-time best comfort foods ever. And you can dress it up and make it fancy, but I like mine the old-fashioned way, which is really simple. It does take time, so if you're in a hurry, make a sandwich or something, but it's not a lot of work, it just takes time. So here's how simple my recipe is. I've got a pound of stew meat, a pound of red potatoes, two big carrots, two stalks of celery, some flour and stock, some spices, onion, garlic, salt and pepper. So very, very simple. Let's start with the meat. First of all, you will probably see that chuck roast is the recommended meat for stew. I think it has too much fat. I just buy a package of stew meat, it's leaner, and uh, I cut off every little bit of fat I can. So let me put it on here just to inspect it. And I need some, I usually use gloves when I work with meat. Can I, I wear my gloves? Yeah, okay, look, see, like right here, I even take that off. Anytime you can avoid saturated fat, it's good. So I just cut that off with a sharp knife, and then we're going to brown the meat. Now, let's talk about browning the meat. You have to, first of all, preheat your pan to medium high, and browning is key to beef stew. You have to brown this meat really, really well, and that also takes time five minutes just for the one side and then you're going to turn it over so you have the pan at medium high we're going to put in about two teaspoons of olive oil there's the hot pan and that's what you want to hear i actually i'm using a non-stick and so the oil kind of clumps a little bit so i just kind of move it around And it's also important that the pieces do not touch because then instead of browning, they'll wind up sort of steaming in their uh, liquid. So these are pretty big enough pieces that I can separate them. But once you get them in the pan, do take a minute with a utensil or with a glove or something and just separate them like that over medium high, nice high heat. And here's the thing. You leave this for five minutes, do not touch it, don't turn it over. I even set a timer so I'm not tempted to take it off, off the heat uh, to turn them over early. So set a timer for five minutes and think of me at your house watching you. Five minutes. I mean it. It's always good to season the meat uh, before anything else goes in. So I'm going to put some salt and pepper on it. And I'm going to do it right before I turn it so that way you remember to do both sides. So we're going to put some salt on this meat. Just kind of sprinkle it with salt and some pepper. Fresh brown pepper is always good. Okay, now it's been five minutes. I think we can start turning it over. I turned over piece by piece because they're not always, see, see that's what you want. See that? That's perfect. It's got to be dark brown like that. See this? That's where that nice flavor is going to come from. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Look at that. That's awesome. Okay, so salt and pepper the other side. If you forget this step, it's not a big deal. Sometimes I forget. Okay, a little salt and pepper. Okay, it's been about uh, three minutes. It's always, always good to look, but see? Nice and brown, that's what you want. Okay, now we're going to add the onion and garlic. You just put it in right on top, like that. And I lower the temperature at this point to about medium. And add a little bit more oil so that uh, the meat and the onions can brown a bit. Just another teaspoon of oil, not much. That's olive oil. I tilt the pan to move the oil around. Okay, now we just start stirring. Stir up anything that is stuck to the bottom. Stir it all into the onions. And you see how quickly the onions start to brown. It's been about three minutes. Can you even imagine? Look at this. That is exactly what it should look like. Brown, meat's brown, the onions and garlic are brown. Now we're going to add two and a half cups of stock. Now let me talk about the stock for a second. I use homemade beef stock, which is amazing for beef stew. If you don't have homemade, don't want to make it, uh, I do not recommend store-bought beef stock. It's way, way too pungent. I use um, unsalted chicken stock, which is perfect for beef stew. Otherwise, the other one is way, way too strong, the beef. So unsalted uh, chicken stock, vegetable stock if you want. But uh, 
I use my homemade beef stock. It's awesome. So two and a half cups of homemade beef stock or store-bought unsalted chicken stock. We're going to add the few spices. It's a half teaspoon of salt, a bay leaf, and a half teaspoon of thyme. Thyme leaves, right? Dried thyme leaves. That's it. We're going to bring up this, the temperature to bring it back to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, we're going to put the lid on it. Yeah, put a lid on it. And simmer it for two hours. Not an hour and 45 minutes. Not an hour and 57 minutes. Two hours. Then I'll show you what to do next. All right, so when you get close to the two hours for the stew, you can start to chop up your vegetables. Uh, you can see that I'm finishing up the potato. They're in about, I would say, what, one inch, about one inch chunks like this, right? And the celery's kind of a little, I don't know, half inch. The carrots are about a quarter inch slices. So this is, now here's how it looks after two hours. Look at this. Look at this. It's dark. The meat is really, really tender. Wait till you see. And it got a little darker. Nice juice. Now we're going to add the vegetables. Carrots, celery, and potatoes. Just dump it in. Potatoes, dump them in. You stir them into the juice as much as you can without breaking the meat. It's so uh, tender, it breaks easily. So try to gently stir it in. Get the vegetables underwater as much as possible. All right, so now uh, you have to, you stir these in really well. Comes back to a boil, which it just did. Doesn't take very long, just a couple minutes. Now that it's back to a boil, you put a lid on it, as they say. Turn the temperature down and cook this for 15 minutes. So after about 10 minutes, you can start checking your vegetables because sometimes they don't even take 15 minutes to cook. So you look at what the biggest one, here's a big potato. See, it's, uh, it's done, look at that. These are done. Carrots are done, okay. All right, so it's time for the last step. And what it is, is I have about a quarter cup of stock and two and a half tablespoons of flour. So I'm putting it into the stock and you whisk that together until there are no lumps. So, uh, you can do it with a fork. A whisk does it a really quick job of it. So it appears to be pretty smooth. And now we're going to, this is what's going to thicken that stew and give it that nice soupy thickness. So you just pour this in and you stir it in and you cook it for five more minutes and that's it. So there it is. Stir it in. Always bring things back up to a boil. Oh my, you just... There is nothing like homemade stew. You couldn't buy this anywhere. You just couldn't. Okay, it's, you can see it's already thickening already. Look at that. Look how fast that works. Oh, here's the bay leaf. It just crawled up the side. So the bay leaf comes out sometime around now. All right, so you stir this in and you cook it for five more minutes. It's back to a boil. Put a lid on it. Turn it down till it's still cooking. Cook it for five more minutes, and it's chow time, baby. Okay, my stew is done. Wait till you see how awesome it is. Okay, look at this. All right, look. Just look, smell, oh. It's thick, the vegetables are perfect. They're, they're don't, they don't fall apart. Let me show you how tender this meat is. Okay, I'm just gonna take two forks, look. Boom, boom. What else can I say? I mean, this is so amazing. Doesn't this like take you back to this video and everything take you back to the 50s when women used to wear aprons and high heels to cook in the kitchen? Nowadays, if they're wearing an apron and high heels, they're making a whole other kind of video.